Let's bow our heads just a moment. Lord, we are again gathering it for the service. And we think of the time in the early days when they all come up to Shiloh for the blessings of the Lord. And now tonight we have assembled here to, to hear your word. And as we have been studying in this certain portion of the scripture, that the Lamb was the only one that could open the seals or to loose them. And we pray that tonight as we have uh, under consideration this great uh, sixth seal, we pray, Heavenly Father, that the Lamb will open it to us tonight, that we are here to understand it. And we're... No man on earth or in heaven was sufficient. Only the Lamb was found sufficient. So may the all-sufficient one come and open the seal for us tonight that we might just look up past the curtain of time. It would help us, we believe, Father, this great, dark, sinful day that we're living. It would help us and give us courage. We trust now that we find grace in your sight. We commit ourselves with the word to you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Good evening, friends. It's a privilege to be here again tonight. Um, to be in the service of the Lord, I just a bit late. I just went to on an emergency of a dying man, uh, of a member of this church. His mother is or just comes here, and they said the boy's dying right then. So I, I went down to see just a a shadow of a man laying on a bed, dying. A man about my age, and and. Just a moment's time, I seen a man rise to his feet, giving praise to God. And, uh, so, uh, God, if we will be willing to confess our sins and do that which is right, ask for mercy, call upon Him, God is willing and waiting to grant it to us. And now, I know it's warm in here tonight, and... and uh, no, I guess the heat's altogether shut off, and and we're. Uh, I noticed last night or today. <clears throat> this is my seventh day in a room without light, just electric light. See, studying and praying for God to open these seals. And there was so many that's uh, wrote in that uh, group of questionnaires or questions last night was more or less not as much as questions. It was wanting to have a healing service anyhow. Wanting to stay an extra day to have a to have healing service on a Monday. <clears throat> so uh, uh, I, uh, I, I, we could, I actually could do it if that was the, the will of the people that they would do that. And you can think it over and let me know. But uh, if you just want to stay and have, pray for the sick because... I've designated all this time completely to these seals and just kept myself away for the seals. So you can think it over and pray over it and let me know. Now, if, if Lord willing, I can. Uh, uh, my next appointment is at uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And that'll be uh, a few days yet. And I have to go home for some business on making a, uh, another uh, convention ready in Arizona. And so then, if it be the will of the Lord, you pray over it, and I'll do the same. Then we'll know more about it a little later. And I just detect now, I see you go talk about sickness. There it comes. See, see this lady sitting right here? If something don't help her, she ain't going to stay here but a little bit. So then, uh, see, we, we just pray that God will... That's what you're here for. Come way away. Yeah. So... Uh, the, the, the Holy Spirit knows just everything, you see. So he, but he, I've tried to designate this time for uh, these seals because we set it for that, you see. But if there's a... How many sick is here anyhow to come to be prayed for? Let's see your hands all around everywhere. Oh, my. 
Hmm. Well, how many would think that that would be right, the will of the Lord, to stay and have us, uh, take Monday night, just pray for the sick, have a healing service Monday night? Would you like to do that? Could you do it? Well, Lord willing, we'll do it. We'll, we'll have prayer service for the sick Wednesday, or Sunday night, or Monday night, and um, pray for the sick. Now, <clears throat> I hope that don't interrupt uh, that the group that I'm going back with, going back to Arizona, Brother Norman, is he here anywhere? Does that interrupt your program, Brother Norman, anything? Brother Fred and the rest of you, is that all right? Eh? That's okay. All right. Then the Lord willing, Monday night, we pray for the sick. Amen. Just one night set aside for that uh, all together, just praying for the sick. Now, it won't be any more of the seals. Uh, for glory, let's open these seals and we pray for the sick uh, Monday night. Now, oh, I've been really enjoying this tremendously, uh, serving the Lord under these. Have you enjoyed this? Amen. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Now, we are now speaking from the fifth seal, or the sixth seal, rather, and that takes down now from the, uh, the twelfth verse of the sixth chapter down to the seventeenth. It's one of the long seals. That's uh, quite a bit of things happen here. And now, the uh, tell a little review of last night. Kind of back up a little each time and say, I, I want to say something to you. I found in that box four or five uh, uh, very uh, uh, important things to me. Uh, I was told that, and I certainly want to apologize is the tape song? Tape song? I uh, want to apologize to my minister brethren and to uh, you people here. They say the other night when I was speaking of, uh, of Elijah, uh, at that hour of uh, when they was, uh, he thought he was the only one was going to be in the rapture, the only one going to be saved. Uh, I said 700 instead of 7,000. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I'm sure sorry of that, folks. I, I, I know better than that. It was just simply a mumble of speech because I know it was 7,000. I just didn't say it right. I, and I, I thank you. And I, that means that I'm glad that you're watching what I say. And you see, then, uh, that's because it, it's, it's 7,000. I got two or three notes on it. It said, uh, Brother Branham, uh, I believe you were mistaken. It said, uh, wasn't a 7,000 instead of 700? I thought, surely I didn't say 700, see? At, uh, and then I, Billy, and then the first thing you know, I picked up another note. It said, Brother Bram, you, I believe you said 700. And one person said, Brother Bram, was that a, uh, a spiritual vision that, that there's just going to be a, a type and you're typing with the set? It puts people on age when you go to thinking these things, see? And it's enough that it puts me on the age. Something happened a day when this seal was revealed. I had to walk completely out in the yard. Just walk around out in the yard a little while. That's right. It just simply almost took my breath right away from me. See? So, it's all attention. Oh, my. See? Another thing. See, you're laying right on to what I say, and God's going to hold me responsible for what I tell you. See? And so I, I must absolutely be as sure as all sure can be sure, see, uh, of these things, because this is a, a tremendous time that we're living in. I was thinking about the healing service for Monday night. That would interfere with you, Brother Neville. Not a thing. Right here. Yeah, that's fine. Hey, Precious hey, Brother Neville. Hey, hey, they, they just, uh, they just made one. I think that lost a pattern. Hey, <laughs> it's a. It certainly has been a, a real chum and friend to me. I tell you, the tabernacle now built and got the Sunday school rooms and everything ready in order here. And some of you people that's around here, right, Jeffersonville, want to come to church. You got a nice place and place to come. Sunday school rooms, fine teacher, and Brother Neville here for the adult class, and a real pastor. I don't say that to a bouquet to him, but I'd rather give him a little rose now than a whole reef after he's gone. And Brother Brother Neville, I've known him since I was just a boy, and I, he hasn't changed one bit. He's still Armin Neville, just like he always was. I remember visiting. Even he had grace enough to ask me to his pulpit when he is a Methodist preacher down here in the city. And um, we had a nice congregation down there in Clarksville. Uh, I guess that's called the Hard Park uh, 
Harrison Avenue Harrison Methodist Avenue. Church. I think that's where he must have found you, Dr. Sister Neville. Dr. McCord, she was a man. I come back up and I said to the church, I said, that was, that's one of the nicest men, and one of these days I'm going to baptize him in the name of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> there he is, and now he's my chum right along my side. And such an honorable, respectable man. He's always stood by me just like he's as close as he could stand. Whatever I say, he just lays right with him, hangs right along. Even when he first came in, he didn't understand the message then, but he believed it, and he stayed right with it. That's an honor. That's respect to a brother like that. I can't say enough for him. And now the Lord bless him. All right. Now a little uh, preview of last evening in the breaking of the fifth seal. We won't go all the way back tonight. Just back far enough to get the, the fifth seal. Now we find out that there was the Antichrist that rode on and wound himself up from three powers, all went into one power, and rode the pale horse death into a bottomless pit into perdition where it come from. And then we find out when the, the Scripture says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God raises up a standard against it. And we've seen it perfectly vindicated in the Word last night. For there was four beast that uh, answered to the the four uh, times that this rider rode. And he rode a different horse each time. A white horse, and then a red horse, and a black horse, and then a pale horse. And we found out those colors and what they were and what they did. Then take it right back into the ages of the churches and exactly that's what it done. Just perfectly. Therefore, you see... When the Word of God blends together, that means it's correct, you see. If I believe anything that hooks with the Word of God is always a man. Now, like a person said they had a vision and said it, uh, it, it was, uh, oh, they know the Lord, give it because it come with great power. Well, that vision might be all right, but if it isn't with the Word and contrary to the Word, it isn't right. Uh, uh, they may be present some. Mormon brethren or sister, and there may be some get these tapes. Now, and I don't want to say that some of the finest people I am, you want to meet would be, be in the Mormon people. Very fine uh, type of people. And then their, their prophet, Joseph Smith, that the Methodist people killed here in Illinois on the journey over. And um, so then uh, that, uh, that fine man, and the vision, I don't doubt at all for what he had the vision. I believe he's a sincere man. But the vision he had was contrary to the Scripture. <laughs> Therefore, they had to have a Mormon Bible to, to make it. See, this is it here to me. This is actually just the Word. That's it. One time, a, 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 a minister came here from a foreign country. And, he, and I seen him out with... Uh, uh, riding around the car with, which is not, uh, with a, a lady, and uh, they come to a meeting, and I found out they drove two or three days, just he and she in the meeting, to come to the meeting together, and uh, the woman had been married three or four different times, and uh, this minister walked up in the hotel lobby where I was, and rode over and shook hands with me, and I shook his hand, raised up and was talking to him. I asked him, I said. Um, when you are free, could I speak to you in my room just a moment? He said, certainly, Brother Branham. I took him to the room, and I said to the minister, I said, Reverend Sir, uh, you're a stranger in this land. I said, but this lady has a, quite a name. I said, are, uh, and you come all the way from such and such a place down to this such and such a place? I said, yes, sir. And I said, you don't, aren't you afraid that that'll kind of, I, I I'm not doubting you, but don't you think that'll reflect on your reputation as a minister? Don't you think we should put a, a little better example than that? And he said, oh, this lady's a saint. I said, I, I don't doubt that. But I said, uh, but brother, the thing of it is, uh, everybody that looks at her is not a saint. <laughs> that looks at what you're doing. And I said, yeah, I believe you better be careful. That just one brother to another. And he said, I said, the lady's been married four or five times now. 
And he said, uh, yes, I know that. He said, you know, I, I, I said, you don't know, teach that in your church at home, do you, for that? So I said, no, but said, you know, I had a vision of it, Brother Branham. I said, well, that's fine. I said, uh, he said, uh, you mind? So I believe I can straighten you out a little bit on your teaching about that. And I said, all right. And, uh, and he, I said, I, I, I'd be glad to know it, sir. And he said, well, I said, you know, I, in this vision, he said, uh, I, I was asleep. And I said, yeah, I seen that. It was a dream. See? And he said, uh, my, my wife said she had been living with another man and said, and running around on me. And said, then she come to me and she said to me, oh, darling, forgive me, forgive me. Said, I, 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 I'm sorry I did it. I'll be true from now. Said, of course, I loved her so much. I just forgive her. Said, all right. And said, then, and said, you know what? Then I got the interpretation of this vision. Said, that was a woman. Said, sure. She's been married and, and so forth and all these times. And said, uh, that, uh, it's all right for her to marry because the Lord loves her so much she can marry as many times as she wants to. I said, your vision was mighty sweet, but it was way off the beaten path here. I said, that's, that's wrong. See, you shouldn't do that. So that, see, but when you see Scripture, uh, dovetailing with Scripture, making it a constant uh, uh, um, continuity, or they come together, the scriptures, where this one leaves off here, this other one over here comes and dovetails in and draws the whole picture out. Like putting a crossword puzzle together, like you find the piece that fits in. There's nothing else can fit it. Then you're getting the picture fixed. Amen. And there's only one can do that. That's the Lamb. Amen. And so we're looking to Him. But we find that when these, this rider, he was one rider that rode these horses. And then we chased him right down, seen what he'd done and everything, and found out back in the church ages that's exactly what he did. And then when he went out on a certain beast and done a certain thing, we find out that there was one sent to combat what he did. There was one sent for the first age of line. Of line. That was the Word, of course, Christ. Next was the ox during a time of the dark age when... When uh, the church had organized and, and had accepted dogmas instead of the Word. And, and remember, the whole thing is based on two things. One, an Antichrist, the other, a Christ. Amen. It's still the same thing today. Amen. There is no halfway Christians. There's no drunk sober man. No black white birds. <laughs> no, no. No sinner saints. No, you're either a sinner or a saint. Amen. There's just no in between. You're either born again or you're not born again. You're either filled with the Holy Spirit or you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. No matter how many sensations you had, if you ain't filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not filled with it. See? And if you have been filled with it, your life shows it. Pulls right up to it. See? Nobody has to tell anybody about it. They see it. See? Because it's a seal. Now, when we find those beasts, how they rode each time. One sent out on his ministry in political powers, uniting uh, religious powers and, and political powers together. We find out God sent out his power to combat it. We go right back and see what the church age was and look back and there it was just exactly that way. And we find out another age come along and the enemy sent out uh, the Antichrist under the name of religion, under the name of Christ, under the name of the church. Yes, sir. Went out under the name of the church. He, that was a real church, he said. See? Antichrist is not Russia. Antichrist is not that. Antichrist is so close like real Christianity until the Bible said it would fool everything that wasn't predestinated. Amen. The Bible said that in Amen. the last days. Everything that wasn't predestinated, the elect, it says the elect. Now, anybody take that word and run it back in your margarine and you see what it means. It says the elected, predestinated. See? It'll fool every one of them whose names were not on the Lamb's book of life from the foundation of the world. When the Lamb was slain, the names were put on the book. He is standing in the holy place tonight in glory as an intercessor making intercessions for every one of those souls whose name is on that book. And nobody knows that name but Him. 
He's the one that's got the book in his hand. And he knows that last one comes in, then his uh, intercessing days is over. He comes forth then to claim what he's interceded for. He, he's doing the kinsman redeemer work now and comes forth to receive his own. Amen. Oh, my. That ought to Good. set every Christian to, to uh, searching himself and holding his hands before God and saying, Cleanse me, O Lord. Look into my life and, and let, me, uh, let me see where my bad part is. Let me get it out of the way right yeah. quick. Yeah. For if the righteous be scarcely saved, where will the sinner and the ungodly appear? It's checking up time. And if you would place it and want to give this word, now I don't want to ask me question on this because you get me plumb over on another, uh, and, I mean, and, and write your questions. I think the questions are uh, done and anyhow. This is the time of the investigation judgment. That's right. Now we'll get that on the on the trumpets when we come to that whenever the Lord provides or the veils. And we'll find out on that investigating judgment when uh, just before the woes went forth and, and we see that that is true. And the three angels that struck the earth crying, uh, you know, woe, woe, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. And we're living in a terrific time. A time that... Uh, you see, these things that we're in now, that we're studying right now, is after the church is done gone. Amen. Amen. These, these things are the tribulation period. And I think it ought to be truly settled in every believer's heart that this church never takes a tribulation period. Amen. You cannot put nowhere the church in tribulation. I, you put the church there, but not the bride. Amen. Amen. The bride's gone on. Because she, she has not one sin. Not a thing against her. The grace of God has covered her over. And the bleach has took every sin so far away. There's not even uh, ever a member of it. Not a thing but purity, perfect in the presence of God. Oh, it ought to make uh, the bride get down on her knees and cry out to God. Hallelujah. I think of a, a little story if I'm not taking too much of your time now, and, and it's preliminary, I'm, I, I do this for a purpose. I feel, I, I feel the Spirit just right. This, talk, this, is a, this is a sacred thing. It's, see, who knows them things there? Nobody but God. And they're not supposed to be revealed and proved in the Bible that they would not be revealed to this day. That's exactly right. See? They was, they was guessed at. But now we're supposed to get it exactly the truth, vindicated truth. See? Notice, now there was um, a little uh, girl in the West that how she uh, fell in love with a, a man and fell in love with her as a buyer of the cattle come out there for the armor company. And, um, and they had a, a great, the boss come one day, the boss's son from Chicago. And, of course, they put them on a regular western frontier. The, the girls there, they dressed up. Each one was going to get this boy. Sure, you know, because that's a main man's boy. So they dressed in their western frontier, and, and they do that out west. They just got through one of those episodes. Now, uh, Brother McGuire, I think he's here now, they caught him downtown without his western clothes on, and they threw him in a in the jail and put him in a kangaroo court and made him pay for it and then made him go buy a western outfit. I seen the rest of them walking out guns about that long hand on them. They just go native out there. They're trying to live in something in the back gone days, bygone. See? And then in Kentucky you're trying to live in a bygone days of the East here. Stay back in Renfro Valley and things. You like to go back to the old days. There's something causing that. But when it comes back to go back to a gospel hey, in the original, you don't want to do that. You want something modern, hey, see? Yeah. Go show them. See, you, you, uh, there's a, and what makes a, a man do wrong, what makes him drink and carry on or a woman do wrong is because she's trying to, there's something in her thirsting, there's something in him thirsting, and they're trying to quench that holy thirst with the things of the world when God ought to be that quench. He made you that way to thirst. That's the reason you thirst for something. God made you that way, so you turn that holy thirst to Him. Amen. Eh? But when you try to quench that thirst, how dare anybody to do that? You have no right to do that. 
to try to quench that holy thirst that you thirst for something. And then and you turn it into the world, try to satisfy it with the world, you can't do it. There's only one thing to fill that up, and that's God. Amen. And He made you that way. So this, this young girl's put on a, a regular Western uh, carry-on for this boy when he, he come out. And each one of them is sure that going to get this boy. There's a little cousin there on the ranch, and she was an orphan. And so she just done all the, the work for these because they had to have the fingernails fixed, you know, and they couldn't wash the dishes for the hands and things. And she done all the real hard work. And then finally, when the boy came, they went out and got him in the old Western style, the buckboard, and they come in shooting their guns and carrying on, you know, and, and acting up. And that night they had a great big dance out there on the on an old-fashioned dance and all the ranchers around about and coming in with their dancing and so forth. And first thing you know, why uh, this uh, went on was Jubilee for two or three days. Then one night, uh, this boy stepped out to, uh, of the place just to rest a while from the dance and got away from these girls. And yet, look, going down towards the crowd, there went a little girl, kind of ragged looking and she had a dishpan full of water. She washed the dishes, and he thought, I've never seen her before. Uh, I wonder where she come from. So he just puts it in his way to go around beside of the, the bunkhouse and go down there and come back side of the corral and met her. She was barefooted. She stopped. She held her head down. She seen who it was, and she was very shy. She knew this great person. And she was just a cousin to these other uh, girls. Her, her father was foreman on this big uh, armor outfit. So they kept, uh, she kept looking down. She's ashamed of being barefooted. He said, what's your name? She told him, said, why aren't you out there to the, where the rest of them is? And she kind of made excuses. And so the next night he watched for her again. Finally, he's sitting out there, and they all got to carrying on everything. He, he sat on the crowd fence and watched for her come throw the dishwater out. And he watched her, and he said to her, he said, you know my real purpose of being here? She said, no, sir, I don't. He said, my purpose of being here is hunting a wife. He said, I find a character in you that they don't have. I was thinking of the church, you see. <laughs> He said, will you marry me? She said, me? Me? I can't think of such a thing. But me? Oh, see, that's the main boss's son. He owned all the companies and ranches throughout the country and everything. See, said, uh, said yes, said, I, I couldn't find one in Chicago. I, I want a real wife. I want a wife with character. And the thing that I'm looking for, I see it in you. So said, will you marry me? She said, well, it startled her. And she said, yes. And he said, well, told her to be back. So now you just make yourself ready. In a year of the day, I'll be back. Well, and I'll get you, and I'll take you away from here. You won't have to work like this no more. I'll take you, and I'll go to Chicago. And I'll build you a home like you've never seen. She said, I don't never, never had a home. I'm an orphan. He said, he said, I'll build you a home. Hallelujah. A real one. He said, I'll be back. He kept in track with her during the time of the year. She worked everything that she could do to save enough money at her dollar a day or whatever she had with her board to buy her wedding dress. Perfect type of the church. Hallelujah. <laughs> she got her garments ready. You know, when she displayed this wedding garment, the, her, her cousin said, why, you poor silly kid. You mean to think that a man like that have anything to do with you? She said, but he promised me. Amen. 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 That his promise, that I believe his word. Amen. Oh, he's just making a fool out of you. He said, if he'd have got somebody, he'd got one of them. I said, but he promised me. <laughs> I'm looking for it. Amen. Hallelujah. I am too. Hallelujah. So, 
kept getting later and later. The day finally arrived. A certain hour he has to be there. So she dressed in her garment. And she hadn't even heard from him. But she knew he'd be there. So she dressed up in her wedding clothes, got things ready. Well, then they really did laugh back because the main boss had sent up to the, to the foreman or, or to, and now the girls heard nothing about it. So it was just all a mysterious thing to them. That is too. <laughs> sure is. But this girl just in place of all of it upon the basis of his word Amen. that he'd be back far. <clears throat> so they got to laugh and they put their hands around one and dancing around her and said, ah, and laughing you know, like that. And said, poor little silly kid. She just stood there, not a bit of blush. She was holding her flowers and her wedding garment all fixed. She was struggling, you know. His bride has made herself ready. Amen. She kept holding her flowers waiting. They said, nah, I told you it was wrong. See, he ain't coming. I said, I got five more minutes. <laughs> said, he'll be here. Oh, they just laughed. And just about time, the old clock ticked up to five minutes. They heard the horses a galloping. Yeah. The sand rolling under the wheels. <laughs> the old buckboard stopped. She jumped from between him and out the door, and he jumped out of the carriage, and she fell into his arms and said, It's all over now. <laughs> Left her little old cousin denomination sitting there looking. She, she went to Chicago to a home. I know of another great promise like that, too. I've gone to prepare a place for you, coming back to receive you. They might be saying we're crazy, but brother, to me, right now, these seals breaking like this, one of this supernatural thing, I can almost hear the sound as that clock of time ticks away into eternity there. I can almost see that angel standing there and saying at the last of that seventh angel's message, time shall be no more. That little loyal bride will fly away into the arms of Jesus one of these days to be taken to the Father's house. Let's think of these things as we go along now. Notice the ministry of the lion, the word, the ox, the labor and sacrifice, the cunningness of the reformers and the, the eagle age coming in. That's to reveal and pick up these things and show them. Now we find out in last night's service also the great mystery opened with this seal which was absolutely contrary to my former understanding. Just to pursue me that it was right. I always allowed them souls under the altar to be the early Christian martyrs, but we found out last night when the Lord God broke that seal for us, it absolutely is impossible. It wasn't then. They were gone on to glory, come on the other side. And there they was, we find out that they were Jews that would come up during the time well, the, from the calling now of the 144,000, which we get into tonight and tomorrow, and, and between the sixth and seventh seal, the 144,000 is called. And then we find out that they were martyrs that had been killed and yet had not been, uh, ex had white robes on, but their names had been on the Lamb's Book of Life. And they were given white robes, each one of them. And we took that. And there was nothing in the world, I don't believe, but that bunch of, of uh, the Jews has went through a pre-tribulation uh, period. When during the time of this last wars, they were, they've, they've got to be hated by everybody. And uh, Eichmann killed millions of them in Germany. You just heard the trial. Amen. Amen. Millions of innocent people slain. Jews, just because they were Jews, no other reason. The Bible said here that they were slain for their testimony of God, uh, for the, the word of God and the testimony to help. Amen. Now we find out that the bride was the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. These had no testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we find out that the Bible says that all of Israel, the predestinated Israel, will be saved. Amen. Romans 11. Now, we know that. And there we've seen them souls. Now, look how close. Why couldn't this be before? Because it hadn't happened before. Amen. Now, you can see it, you see. See the great Holy Spirit seeing those things coming down through the, the ages and times. And now, it's being revealed. And now, you can look there and see that's the truth. 
There's where it's at. Now, it was a, it was a, uh, the martyrs in the tribulation, uh, the pre-tribulation of Eichmann. Now, they only type the martyrs of the 144,000 which were entering into between the sixth and seventh seal. And, and the seventh seal is just one thing. <laughs> That's all. And um, this, it was silence in heaven for a space of a half hour. And now only God can reveal that. Amen. It's not even symbolized nowhere. That's Amen. tomorrow night. Pray for me. Amen. Now, we notice now as we go into the sixth seal. Now may the Heavenly Father help us as we settle down now to this sixth seal. Now, this twelfth verse of the sixth chapter. And I beheld when he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she's shaken of a mighty wind. And the heavens departed as a scroll when it's rolled together, and every mountain and every island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great man and the rich man and the chief captains and the mighty man and every bond and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. You know what notice there? Look at that mighty man. See, what had they done? They had received the wine of the wrath of the fornication of the harlot. See, that's exactly the same class that drank of her wine. See, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that setteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of His wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? What an introduction to it. To see the riders now, the riders, beast, and the answering beast have ceased. Then we take it up. We see the martyrs under the throne. Of this, but from the time these martyrs are the true Orthodox Jews that died in Christian faith or in, in religious faith because they could not be Christians. Remember, God blinded their eyes. And they're going to be blind for a long time until the Gentile church is taken out of the way. Because God doesn't deal with them two people at the same time because it's very contrary to his work. Remember, he deals with Israel as a nation. Always. It's the nation of Israel. The Gentiles as individuals, people taken from the Gentiles. And it had to, the Gentile had to make made up of all the peoples of the world. So now and then there's a Jew comes into that. See? Just like an like a Arabian and a Irish and Indian and what more? It's all the peoples of the world make up this bouquet bride. See, but now when it comes to dealing them with Israel, in this last part of the seventh week, he deals with them as a nation. Amen. The Gentiles are finished. The hour is soon arriving, and maybe at this this very night, that God will completely turn from the Gentiles altogether. Exactly said so. Amen. They shall Amen. tread down the walls of Jerusalem until the Gentile dispensation be finished. Amen. The times are over. Yes, sir. And then let him that's filthy stay filthy. Let him that's righteous be righteous. See? There's no more blood on the seat of the of the of the saint in the sanctuary at all. There's no more blood on the altar. The sacrifice has been removed. There's nothing but smoke and lightning and judgment in there. And that's just exactly what's poured out here tonight. Amen. Okay. The Lamb's done left the, his mediatorial work. The mediatorial work has been finished from over on the throne. And the sacrifice, as we've typed him perfectly, the kinsman redeemer, the bloody Lamb that come forth, a Lamb that had been slain, a bloody one, been killed, brood, come forth and tuck the book out of his hand. That's the days are finished. Now he's coming to claim what he has redeemed. Amen. Hey, man, I just sent something through me. We find out now, 
John said, I beheld when he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. Then all nature was interrupted. See, God's been doing great things. Like healing the sick and opening the eyes of the blind and doing great work. But we find out here that nature took a tumble. Yes, all nature. Look what's taking place. The, the earth quaked. The sun went black. And the moon would give its light. The stars shook and fell. And why, everything happened. See? Right at the time of the opening of this sixth seal. That's when it takes place. Right immediately after the announcement of those martyrs. Okay? The martyrs have been finished. Now you see we're right close into that hour now. We could be at any time. Amen. See, because the church is just about ready to take its flight. But remember, when these things happen, the bride won't be here. Just remember, the bride's gone. She don't have to go through any of it. This is a time of tribulation, of purification of the, uh, of the church. It's put up on her for her to go through it. Not the bride. He takes his sweetheart out of the way. <laughs> That's her. She done redeemed her. See, it's kind of a... That's his own selection, his own choice. Like any man who takes his bride. Now, the earthquake. Let us compare scriptures now. I, I want... Uh, have you got a pencil and paper with you? I want you to do something for me. Or you want to write, write this because it lets you go take the tape. <laughs> Now we, I want you to read with me as you do. Compare scriptures of this great event that we will see that this great secret or uh, mystery that was under the sixth seal of the book of redemption. Now remember, these are hidden mysteries. And the six seals all together is one great big book. Just six scrolls roll together. And it unwinds the whole book of redemption. That's how the whole earth was redeemed. That's the reason John wept. Because if no one could get that book, all creation, everything was gone. She just simply turned back to, to, to atoms and molecules and so forth and cosmic light and not even be creation, person, nothing else. Because... Adam lost the rights of that book. He forfeited it when he listened to his wife and she listened to Satan's reasonings instead of the Word of God. Amen. See? It was forfeited. Then it couldn't go back into the dirty hands of Satan who tempted her out of the way. So therefore, it went back to its original owner like any abstract deed would do. See, goes right back to its original owner and that was God. The Creator who made it. And He holds it. And there's a price. And that's redemption. Amen. There's some price for redemption. And there was nobody could do it. Amen. So He said, made His laws, His own laws of a kinsman redeemer. Then they could find nobody. Every man was born of sex. Born after sexual desire. He's in the original sin. Satan and Eve. So he could not do it. There's nothing in him. No holy pope, priest, doctor, divinity, of, uh, whoever he might be. He was nobody worthy. And he couldn't be an angel because he had to be a kinsman. He had to be a man. Then God himself become a kinsman by taking on a human flesh to the virgin birth. And he shed his blood. That wasn't the blood of a Jew. It wasn't the blood of a Gentile. It was the blood of God. Amen. The Bible said we're saved through the blood of God. Amen. The child takes the father's blood. We know it. Anything in the male sect produces the hemoglobin. So we find out like the hen laying the egg. She can lay an egg, but if the rooster or the mate hasn't been with her, it won't hatch. It's not fertile. Amen. The woman's only the incubator that carries the egg. But... The egg come, the germ comes from the male. 
And in this case, the male was God Himself. Amen. That's how I say how up is down and, and big is little. God was so great till He become even formed Himself in such a teeny thing to a little teeny germ into the womb of a virgin. And around there he developed the cells and the blood and was born and raised on earth. And from that kind of a start, unadulterated, no sex desire to it at all. Amen. And then he gave that blood because he became a kinfolks to us and he was a kinsman redeemer. And he shed that blood freely. He didn't have to. He gave it freely to redeem. Then he goes up on the altar of God and waits there while God holds the book of redemption in his hands and the bloody lamb stands on the altar of sacrifice. There's the lamb to make redemption, make an intercession. Then how dare anybody say that Mary or Joseph or any other mortal could be, uh, be an intercessor. You cannot intercess unless there's blood there. Yes, sir, there's one mediator between God and man, and that's Christ Jesus. That's what the Scripture says. There He stands, and until the last soul has been redeemed, and then He comes forth to claim what He's redeemed. Oh, what a, what a great Father He is. Amen. Now, remember, now, I've always taught that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And the Scripture, just like you can't take one Scripture... And prove nothing lest there's something else goes with it. See? see, I can take one scripture and say Judas went and hung himself. Take another and say you go do the same. See, But see, it won't blend in with the rest of it. And I thought under this sixth seal, when the Holy Spirit broke it forth there and I seen what it was, then I thought it'd be a good thing to give the class a little something different tonight. See, Because it might be tiring and just listen to me talking all the time. So I thought that we'd do something different. Now I notice... This great event was sealed under the book of mystery of the redemption. Now the Lamb has it in His hand. It's going to break it. Now let's look to Matthew, the 24th chapter. The Lamb Himself speaking. Now anyone knows that Christ is the author of the whole book as far as that concerned. But this is His, his speech here, or His, his uh, sermon um, to the, the people. All right, to the Jews. Now, I want you to hold your book like this. Matthew 24 and Revelation 6, like this. And let's compare something here just a little bit. Watch this now and you can find out uh, just how, how it is. See what the Lamb here is showing exactly in symbol what He said over here in Word. Do it exactly. So that makes it right. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Here's, here's one, He's talking of it, and here's where it happened. It's just uh, perfect vindication. Now, now let's look at the 24th chapter of St. Matthew and Revelation 6 and compare the 24th chapter of Matthew. We all know that that was a chapter that every scholar, every person goes to to, to talk about the tribulation period. Right. It comes out of uh, the 24th chapter of Matthew. And now, let's, if that is so, now before we know that this sixth seal is the judgment seal. Amen. It's the judgment seal. Exactly what it is. Now, see, we've had the, the Antichrist ride, seen the church go, now it's finished, goes up. Then we see the martyrs of them Jews back there under the altar. Now, here is the breaking forth of the judgment upon the people who are out of this tribulation judgment will come forth the 144,000 redeemed Jews. I'll prove to you they are Jews and not Gentiles. They have nothing to do with the bride. Not a thing. The bride, we don't see the bride's gone. You can't place that anywhere else. Don't come back again until the 19th chapter of the book of the Acts. Now notice, for the sixth seal is the judgment seal of the Word. Now, here, let's start out now and let's... Read uh, St. Matthew, the 24th chapter. Now, i just like to give you something here. I've just looked up to find. Now, St. Matthew from 1 to 3, well, is where we go to read first. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him, 
for to show him the building of the temple. And he said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be one be left here, one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, and third verse, As he sat upon Mount Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when these things shall be, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. Now, let's stop there. These three verses, it took place actually on Tuesday afternoon, April the 4th, A.D. 30. And the first two verses took place on the afternoon of, the, of April the 4th and A.D. 30. And the third verse taken place on Tuesday evening of the same day. See? They come to the temple and they ask them these things. What about this? And what about this? Look at this great temple. Isn't it wonderful? He said, There won't be one stone left on another. Then he went up on the mountain and sat down. See? That, that, there's, he starts in the afternoon. And then when they did, they asked him up there, said, We want to know about some things. Now notice, here is, here is three questions are asked by the Jews, his disciples. Three questions are asked. What? What? Um, uh, first, first, what, when shall these things be? When there won't be one stone left upon another. What shall be the sign of thy coming? Second question. And of the end of the world. See it? There's three questions. Now that's where many men make their mistake. They apply these things here to some age then when you see he's answering three questions. They, watch now how, how beautiful it is. Third verse, see? The last phrase there in the third verse. And what shall be first? Uh, they called him to Mount of Olives here privately. Tell us, when shall these things be? Question number one. What shall be the sign of thy coming? Question number two. And of the end of the world? Question number three. See? There's three different questions asked. Now, now, I want you to turn over and watch how Jesus here tells them about these things. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it just makes me... I, I, I get the... What was that word we used the other night? The Stimulation. Stimulation from Revelation. <laughs> Notice. Now, let's turn now to the first seal, uh, the, the seals of this book, and compare this first seal... With this first question and each question, compare it right down and see if it don't run hand in hand, just like we've done in all these others, opening up to the church ages and everything exactly the same. That's the seal perfectly open then. Notice. Now, now we're going to read first for the... Uh, then he answered them, and, uh, and then he, he's going to start answering them. And we want to compare it with the seals. Now watch. The first seal is Revelation 6, 1 and 2. Now we read 6, 1 and 2. And, uh, and I saw the Lamb when He had opened one of the seals. And I heard this is the noise of a thunder. One of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Who did we find his fellow was? Antichrist. Antichrist. Matthew 24 now. 4 and 5. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Hallelujah. See it? Antichrist. There's your seal. See? See? He spoke it here, and here they opened the seal, and here he was. Just perfect. Now, the second seal, Matthew 24 and 6, Revelation 6, 3 and 4. Now watch, Matthew 24 and 6. Now let me see what it says. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Amen. All right, let's take the second seal, Revelation 6, 3 and 2. Watch what he says now. And when he had opened the second seal, and I heard the second beast say, Come see, and there went forth a 
another horse that was red and power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another and there was given to him a great sword. Perfectly. Just exactly. Oh, I like to make the Scripture answer itself. The Holy Spirit wrote it all, but He's able to reveal it. Now, let's notice the third seal. Now, this is famine. Now, Matthew 24, 7 and 8. Let's get 7 and 8. And Matthew, And nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrow. See, you're coming right on up now. Now, Revelations and the six. Uh, now we're going to open the third seal. It's found in Revelation six, five and six. And when he had opened the third seal, I, I beheld the third beast say, "Come and see." And I beheld in law a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, "A measure of penny, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny." And <clears throat> see thou hurt not the oil and wine. Famine. See? Amen. Exactly the same seal. Amen. Same thing Jesus said. All right? Fourth seal. Pestilence and death. Notice Matthew uh, uh, 24. We'll read the, the eighth verse. Uh, seventh and eighth, I believe it is, on this fourth seal. I got here. All right? Now, what did I read back here? Did I read something wrong? <laughs> Yeah, I've had that more. Yeah, there we are. Now we go. Now we go. All right, sir. Now let's start here at the seventh on this, uh, the fourth seal, and on the six and seven and eight on the other one, on the uh, Revelations. Now, let's see this seventh and eighth of Matthew 24. All right. Now, and nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrow. Now, the fourth seal, as we read it over here, was um, uh, the fourth seal was again seventh and eighth on this other now. And when he had opened the fourth seal, and lo, the fourth beast said, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a uh, pale horse. Now, wait, I got this wrote down wrong. Yeah. Uh, just a minute. Uh, seven and eight. Now, let's see. Uh, Matthew 24, seven and eight. Now, let's see. We'll get that. That's the third opening, isn't it? Matthew uh, 24, 7 and 8. I'm sorry. Now, that opens up the rain or the famine. Right, yeah. It opens up the famine. All right. Now, the uh, uh, pestilence and death. Yes, sir. Now, we're going to it. 7 and 8. Now, that would be the fourth seal. Let's see where we get the fourth seal. And when he opened the fourth seal, yes, yeah, a pale horse rider. Death. See? And... And I looked and behold a pale horse, and he, a uh, pale horse, and his name that sat on him was called Death, and hell followed him, and the power was given unto him over the four parts of the earth to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. Now, see, that was death. Now, the fifth seal, Matthew uh, 24, 9, 13. Let's see if I got this right now again. See, And then shall be deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. There you are. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And when, and then many shall betray, uh, many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Now, we're on the fifth seal now. And that was last night, see? They would deliver you up, betray one another, and so forth. Now, watch here. On the sixth seal, 6, 9 to 11. Oh, right, let's get that in Revelation 6, 9 to 11. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, Lord, holy, true, does thou judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Now, and white robes were given to every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren should be killed as they were. 
should be fulfilled. Now I see under the fifth seal we find we find here martyrdom. And under the twenty four nine over here we to thirteen we find also that it was martyr they shall deliver you up and kill you and, and so forth. See the same seal being opened. Now in the sixth seal is one we're coming to now. Matthew twenty four, twenty nine and thirty. Twenty four, let's get twenty nine. Uh, and uh, and thirty. Here we are. Now, now we're going to get also Revelation six, twelve to seventeen. That's exactly what we just read. Now listen to this. Now what Jesus said in Matthew twenty nine, uh, twenty four, twenty nine and thirty. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, what when the, this tribulation, this amateur tribulation they went through here, see. The sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall be all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now, read over here in Revelation uh, now, uh, the sixth seal, the one we're on right now. And behold, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth, see, of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven uh, fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the heavens departed as a scroll, as it is rolled together, and every mountain and every island moved out of their place and the kings of the earth and the great man and the rich man and the chief captains and the mighty man and every bondsman and every free man hid themselves in the dens of the rocks of the mountain and said unto the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sets upon the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come who shall be able to stand this perfectly Turn right back over. See what Jesus said here now, Matthew uh, 24, 29. Listen. After the, this Eichmann case and so forth, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not, uh, shall not give her light, stars shall fall from heaven, the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now watch. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And they shall see, and, they sh and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with great power and glory and send forth his angels and so forth and with the sound of a trumpet and shall gather them together as the four winds strove together. See, just exactly comparing what Jesus said in Matthew 24 and what the revelator here opened up in the sixth seal is just exactly and Jesus was speaking of the tribulation period. See? First he asked, when these things would be, when the temple would be taken away. He answered that. Next thing he asked, when there would come time, there come the martyr age, and when this would do, when the Antichrist would rise, and when the Antichrist would take away the temple. Daniel, how we could go back and pick up Daniel there when he said that this prince that would come. You readers know that. Amen. And what should he do? He would take away the daily sacrifice and what all would take place during the time. Said Jesus, even speaking of your underline, said, when you see the abomination that make a desolation spoken by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place. Amen. What is that? The mosque of Omer stood in the place of the temple when they burned it down. Said, let them that's in the mountains, uh, let them that's on the housetop, uh, don't come down to take things out of the house for him that's in the field, return back, for there will be a time of trouble. You see? And all these things would take place. Moved them on down now and vindicated back to this opening of the sixth seal. Now, I want you to notice, Jesus, uh, about tomorrow night, on this, Jesus omitted the teaching of the seventh seal. Amen. It's not here. Watch, he goes right on with parables now, after that. And John omitted the seventh seal. The seven last, the seventh seal. That's going to be a great thing. 
not even written. They omitted the seventh seal. Both of them did. And the revelator, when uh, uh, God just said, it was John said, there's just silence in heaven. Jesus never said a word about it. Notice. Now, back to the 12th verse. Notice, no beast, that's the 12th verse, start off on our seal, to see it open. Uh, no beast, like living creatures, is represented here either, like it was on the 5th seal. Why? This happened the other side of the gospel age in the tribulation period. This sixth seal is the tribulation period. That's what takes place. The bride has gone. See? There's no living creature, nothing there to say it. It's just, now God is not dealing with the church no more. It's been gone. He's dealing with Israel. See? This is the other side. This is when Israel received the message of the kingdom by the two prophets of Revelations 11. Remember, Israel is a nation. God's servant nation. And when, when, when Israel is brought in, it'll be a, a national affair. Israel, the kingdom age, is where David... The son of David sits on the throne. That's the reason that woman cried, Thou son of David. And David is the son of David. God swore by him. The David that he had raised up his son that would take his throne and be an everlasting throne. See? It have no end. Solomon gave it a type in the temple. And Jesus just told him here, that's, There won't be a rock left on one of them. But he's trying to tell him here what's he's coming back. Amen. When are you coming back? These things will take place before I come back, and here they are. Amen. Now we're at the time of the tribulation. Remember, when the kingdom is set up on the earth, uh, this may be a little shocking, and if there's a question, you, you still ask me uh, if you want to put the question up. After it's called, just hit it. If you, didn't, if you don't already know it, in the time of the millennium, it's Israel that's a nation. Amen. The twelve tribes is a nation. But the bride is in the palace. Amen. Amen. She's the queen now. She's married. Amen. And all of the earth shall come in to this city, Jerusalem. And shall bring the glory of it in there. And the gates will not be shut by, by, by night because there won't be any night. See? The gates will always be open. And the kings of the earth, Revelation 22, bring their honor and glory into this city. Hallelujah. But the bride is in there with the Lamb. Amen. Oh, my. You can see that. In there. Not the bride isn't going to be out here laboring in the vineyards. Amen. No, sir. She's the bride. Amen. She's the queen. Amen. To the king. It's the others that labor out there, the nation. Amen. Not the bride. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. Notice these messengers now. These messengers of the Revelation 12, these two prophets, they're going to preach the kingdom is at hand. Okay? The kingdom of heaven is to be set up. The time lasts three and one half years of Daniel's 70th week. Promised to the Jews, his people. Remember now that to prove that, that this is Daniel's Last part of the 70th week. i got a question on that for tomorrow. See? Now, 70 weeks was promised, which was seven years. And in the midst of the seven weeks, the Messiah was to be cut off to be made a sacrifice. He would prophesy three and one half years. And then he'd be cut off for a sacrifice for the people. And there is still a determination that three and a half years is still determined for Israel. Amen. Then when Messiah was cut off, the Jew was blinded, so he couldn't see that was Messiah. 
And then when Messiah was cut off, then the gospel and grace age come to the Gentile. And they come down and God pulled one from here and there and here and there and put them away under the messengers and here and there and here and there and put them away under the messengers and he sent forth the first messenger and he preached and the trumpet sounded as we pick it up after a while and then the trumpet was declaring war. Trumpet always denotes war. The messenger, the angel come on earth. The messenger of the hour. Like Luther's, like any of the messengers that we talked to, what does he do? He arrives and a seal opens, revealed, a trumpet sounds, war declared, and away they go. And then the messenger dies. He seals away this group, they're put in, and a plague falls upon those who rejected it. See? Then it goes on, then they organize, get another organization. We've just come through it. Then here they come out with another power. See? Another power, another age of the church, another ministry. And when he does that, long comes God with his ministry. Amen. When the Antichrist comes with his. See, anti is against. They run side by side. I want you to notice a little something. Just about the time that, that Cain come on earth, Abel came on earth. I want you to notice just about the time that, that Christ came on earth, Judas came on earth. About the time that Christ went off of earth, Judas went off the earth. Just about the time that the, the Holy Spirit fell, the Antichrist spirit fell. Just about the time the Holy Ghost is revealing Himself here in the last days, the Antichrist is showing His colors, coming up through His politics and things. And just about the time the Antichrist moves Himself fully on the street, on the scene, God moves Himself fully on to redeem Himself. Just run, just right together. And they're both side by side. Cain and Abel. The crow and the dove on the ark. Judas and Jesus. And just on down. You can take it just... Here was Moab and Israel. Both of them. Moab was not a heathen nation. No, sir. They offered the same sacrifice that Israel was offering. They prayed to the same God. Exactly. Moab was... Caught, was one of Lot's daughters uh, that uh, slept with her father and had a child. And that child was called Moab. And from him sprang the Moab race. The country of Moab. And when they seen Israel, their redeemed brother come. They were fundamentalists. They were a big denomination. Israel had no denomination. She just dwelt in tents and wherever you could go. <laughs> but Moab had the dignitaries, kings, Amen. and so forth. And they had Balaam up there, a, a false prophet. And they had all this. Then they come down there to curse their little brother that was on the road to the promised land, Amen. going to his promise. And he went and asked them, can I pass through your land? If my cows drink water, I'll pay for it. If they look up grass, we'll pay for it. He said, no, you're not holding no revival like that around here. <laughs> right? They're not holding anything like that around here. And then watch what he done. He come right back in the Jezebel farm and come down through a, that false prophet and caused the children of God to err and married Moabite women into, uh, into Israel and caused adultery. And he did the same thing in that same age on the journey on the road to the promised land we're on. What did he do? The false prophet come right around and married and called into the Protestant church and caused denominations just exactly what they did back there. Yeah. But little old Israel moved right on the same. She railed in the wilderness for a long time and all them old fighters had to die off but she went right on into the promised land. Yeah. Yes. Watch them all in the arm just before they cross the Jordan. <laughs> I like that. Now we're getting down to that age right now. Here now. Notice. Now we find out that the time lasts, I said, three and one half years of Daniel's 70 weeks. Let me explain that a little closer now because I see somebody here that's always watched that. Now I want to try to make myself clear, a teacher. Notice, when the 70 weeks come in, when Daniel's seen the vision of the time coming and the ending up of the Jews, but he said there was determined 70 weeks. That's seven years. In the midst of it, while the Messiah would be here or, and would be cut off for a sacrifice. Now that's exactly what taking place. Then God dealt with the Gentiles. 
till he took out a people for his name as soon as the Gentile church was taken out, he'd taken up the church. Amen. And when he did, the sleeping virgin, the church itself, the bride went up, and the church itself was put into outer darkness where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. In the same time, the tribulation falls upon that people. And while the tribulation is falling, in there comes these two prophets of Revelations 11 to preach the gospel to them. And they preach a thousand, one hundred and three score days. See? Well, that's exactly with 30 days in a month like the real calendar has. It's exactly three and one half years. That's Daniel's 70th, part, last part of the 70th week. Amen. See? God has to deal with Israel in here. No, sir. A brother asked me not long ago, said, should I go to a, a brother here in the church, a precious dear brother, said, uh, I, I want to go to Israel. I believe there's a waiting. Someone said to me, Brother Bram, you ought to go to Israel right now. They said, see, you can't do it. Amen. I stood right there and I thought, them Jews said, if, I, well, if this be Jesus, be the, be the Messiah, I said, let me see him do the sign of the prophet. We'll believe our prophets because that's what they're, they're supposed to be. What a setup, I thought. Here I go. When I got right there, right close to it, right, I was, well, I was at Cairo. And I was having a ticket in my hand for Israel. And I said, I, I'll go see if they ask that. If they can see a sign of a prophet, we'll see if they'll accept Christ. Louis Petrus of the Stockholm Church sent him a million Bibles. And those Jews coming in there, you've seen the picture I got on the reel right back here now. Three minutes to midnight. And them Jews coming in from all over the world, everywhere, beginning to gather in. Over there, after England had went in there during the time of uh, General Allaby and the decline of the World's War in the second volume, I think it is, and they surrendered, the Turks surrendered. Then he gave it back to Israel, and she's been growing as a nation, and now she's a perfect nation. Her own money, currency, flag, army, everything else. See? And these Jews coming back to the homeland, they were, first thing, when they went out in Iran and down in there to get them, they asked, they said, um, he said uh, they wanted to take them back to Israel, give them their, take them back to their land, Palestine, where they're supposed to be. And remember, as long as Israel's out of that land, she's out of the will of God. Amen. Like Abraham was given to. And when they wouldn't get on that plane, they didn't ever see anything like that. This old rabbi stepped out there and said, Our prophet told us that when Israel went home, it'd be on the wings of an eagle. Amen. <laughs> On the plain, the way home. There she is now, building the fig tree, restoring. Amen. Amen. The old six-point star of David flying. Hallelujah. The Gentile days numbered with horrors and covered. Amen. The tribulation period right at hand, standing right there, and the seals being opened. The church ready to take her flight in the Amen. air, and the tribulation Amen. set in. Then God comes down and pours the 144,000. Amen. There, oh, it's perfect. You see where the seals bring it out now? See, open it up. Now, this is the last three and a half years to the people. Also, if you notice, it's a time that God will call that 144,000 Jews in this last three and a half years. Amen. See, he hasn't dealt with them at all. They haven't had a prophet. They won't believe nothing else but a prophet. Amen. He ain't fooling them. So they're going to hear a prophet. Amen. Yes, sir. And that's all. That God told them at the beginning, they stay right with it. Yes. He said, The Lord your God shall raise up a prophet among you. Amen. Like me. Amen. Moses said that. Amen. He said, Him shall you hear. And whoever who will not hear that prophet will be cut off from the people. Amen. That's right. And you see, their eyes had to be blinded or they would recognize him. Amen. Instead of that being blinded, they were that, that Satan get on them and they said he's a fortune teller, Beelzebub. Amen. Let his blood be upon us. We know there's nothing to him. See? And the poor people is blinded. That's the reason the Eichmann group and all that group of slain back there had a right to come in. Their own father had to blind their eyes so he could take us. Amen. That's the most pathetic thing in the Scriptures nearly. Amen. Just think of there, the Jews were calling the blood of their own father. Their own God hanging there bleeding. Look. There they crucified him, the Bible said. That's a four of the greatest words. Look, there, Jerusalem, the most holy city in the world. They, the most holy people in the world, crucified the most brutal death in the world. Him, the most important person in the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? 
The religious people, the greatest religion in the world, the only true religion in the world, were standing there crucifying the very God that their Bible said would come. Amen. Why didn't they see it? The Bible tells us that God blinded them. So they couldn't see it. They, he said, which one of you can accuse me of sin? In other words, if I haven't done exactly what's predicted for me to do, then you tell me. Sin's unbelief. He'd done exactly what God told him, but they couldn't see it. Now when he talked to people, it's just like throwing water on a duck's back. Do you see what I mean? It's a pitiful thing. When you see this nations and people, the way they do, so starts in religion. But don't the Holy Spirit tell us that they'll be heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, truth-breakers, false accusers, incontinent and despisers of those that are good, that have a form of godliness but would deny the power of the gospel. That from such turn away from them. Amen. Here we are, these denominations twisted up. They take all the glory and power, place it back with the apostles and the rest of it over the millennium. Yeah. It's just like a man, as I said before. A man is always giving God praise for what he has done, looking forward to what he will do, and ignoring what he's doing right now. Amen. Exactly. Man's still the same thing. There were them Jews standing there saying, Glory to God, why? At the sixth chapter of St. John said, Our fathers eat man in the wilderness, and Jesus said, They're everyone dead. Amen. They drink water from a rock in the wilderness, and they, he said, I am that rock. Amen. <laughs> That's right. Amen. He said, But I am the bread of life that comes from God's out of heaven, that tree of life from eating back other. If a man eats this bread, he shall not die. I'll raise him up again at the last day. Still, they couldn't see it. That's right. The very Messiah standing there speaking the very words of their heart and things like that, showing that he was Messiah, just what Messiah was supposed to do. Amen. And them standing there with their hands behind him and, ah, it can't be. No, no, he, he, he didn't come in the right trend. See, he come out of Bethlehem and he, he's nothing but an illegitimate child and that's the devil working on him. We, we know he's mad, he's crazy, he's, he's got a devil. See, yeah. their eyes were actually blinded to that. Amen. Now, but they're looking for their prophet. Amen. And they're going to receive it. Amen. Go to receive to them. That's right. Now, notice again. Now, also, when these Jews, I'll give you another little symbol so you can realize that it's Jews over here now, on this side of the rapture. Watch what takes place. It's also symbolized, we won't take time to do it because we run run out here. Also symbolized in the in what is called Jacob's trouble. Now look. These Jews here has noticed. Oh, it's a, I, I'm going to take this a little bit of time. Here. Amen. Amen. It makes me nervous when he starts skipping around like that. Amen. Notice. I want you to see it. Uh, 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 this, well, God will show it to you, I'm sure. Look. Jacob had the birthright. Is that right? Yeah. But he sure was a little shyster with it. Yeah. See? He went down and he deceived his daddy. He deceived his brother. He done everything. But yet, legally, right down, he had it because he saw it sold out. Amen. But then when he goes down there to work for his father-in-law, he put those popper sticks in the water to make those pregnated cattle and things, bring forth speckled calves and oh, you know everything he done like that, just to, to gain money. Now watch. Now he was ousted from his people. Now, it's a type of the Jew now. Amen. He's a money snatcher. I don't care how he gets it, he'll get it. Amen. He'll skin you alive to get it. Well, you know that. He's a little shyster. That's all. Boy, don't deal with him. <laughs> he'll get you, boy. <laughs> yes, sir. Why? He's got to be that. That's the kind of a spirit that's dominating this exactly like them reformers could not understand this word because that was the spirit of the man sent to them. It's the eagle age that gets the word in the revelation. Amen. Amen. All that understands that, raise up your hand. So I, that's good. That's fine. That's good. Now, see, if you can get back here under these seals, if they ever get, when they're open, you can see exactly what God's doing. What he has done. What he is going to do. 
Here it is exactly, and that's the reason man acts that way, because that's the spirit that's predicted for that age to be on them. Amen. They couldn't do nothing else. Nothing could John, Paul, and them, that lying spirit there, uh, the L-I-O-N, standing there, the Word itself, Paul stood right with that word and said, I know this, that there will be false brethren rise up among you. Amen. Go around what they'll make denominations and everything else among Amen. you. And what they'll do, and they'll go on to the last days and the horrible time. Why? He was a prophet. Amen. I stood that word in him. How would he end up way over there? said, false man among yourself will rise up and speaking things and draw away brethren. Amen. We're disciples. That's exactly the Antichrist. Amen. It did just exactly that. Notice, as they went into the dark age of the tribulation, what was it? There was nothing they could do. Rome owned the, he had the religious power and he had the political power. There was nothing they could do but just labor to stay alive and give themselves for sacrifice. It was an ox. That's all they could do. That's the kind of spirit they had. The spirit of God, the ox. Then here come the reformers, the head of the man, shrewd, wise, Martin Luther, John Wesley, and so forth. Calvin, Finney, Knox, <laughs> the rest of them. Here they come forth. And what they did, they were reformers. They come forth reforming, bringing people out, and turned right back around exactly like they did back there and married right straight back into her again on their denominational system. Amen. That's exactly the Bible said so. She was a whore and she had harlots uh, daughters. Yeah. Just exactly. And God said, I'll, I'll give her space to repent. She didn't do it, so I'm going to take her and her offsprings. Yeah. Cast them over here where they belong. That's yeah. exactly. That, God said that under the seal, under the seal. Now, there she was. We find out that he does that, and he will do it. And there, everyone headed that way. But the all that's got their names on the book of life, Amen. God will call. They'll hear it. Amen. My sheep hear my voice. Amen. Jesus said. Amen. The only thing we got to do is make a sheep call. Amen. Goats don't know it. <laughs> Notice. But you see, the sheep call, and my sheep hear my voice. Why? What is a voice? I'll tell you what a voice is. A voice is a, is a spiritual sign. He said to Moses, if they won't hear the voice of the first sign, they will hear the voice of the second sign. My sheep hear my voice. When these things are supposed to be taking place in the last days, sheep of God recognize that. <laughs> They recognize it. Hallelujah. My sheep know me. <laughs> stranger, they won't follow. <laughs> they don't follow them strangers. It's got to be a vindicated sign of the day, and they see it. Now, now notice. Now, Jacob, as he come up now, the first thing you know, he got a longing to go where? Back to the homeland. Oh, that's exactly what Israel's done. Amen. That's, that's, that's Israel. Jacob is Israel. He's had his name changed, right. you know. See? And he's, uh, he got out there and he got all the money he had and he could get and tuck it any way he could from his kinfolks or anybody else. So cheating, stealing, lying, any way he could get it, he got it. See? He did. And then when he starts back to home, he got to get a homesick feeling in his heart. But as he started back, on his road going back, he met God. <laughs> then his name was changed. See? But in this time, he was so wearied because he's afraid Esau was coming after him. <laughs> See? And, and what's, what's the money? The money proposition, just like the Jew will try making this covenant with, with Rome. See? And their money proposition. Notice it. That Esau didn't need his money. <laughs> Neither does Rome. <laughs> She's got the wealth of the world in her hand. But uh, it didn't work. But we find out now that Israel, in that time of trouble when he was Jacob, he wrestled with the... That, he got a hold of something that was real. Amen. There was a man come down. Amen. Jacob got his arms around him. And he stayed there. And the fellow said, I must be going now. It's coming daylight. Oh, that breaking of the day. See? It's fixing to come day. But Jacob said, I, I'm not going to leave you. Amen. You just can't go. I'm going to stay right with you. Amen. Huh? Amen. I want things change here. 
That's that 144,000, that money scheming bunch and things like that. When they see the true genuine thing to get a hold of, there stands Moses and there stands Elijah. Hey, man, they'll wrestle with God until 144,000 of the tribes of Israel are called out right now. That's just before the tribulation period. Oh, how wonderful. Also, Jacob's trouble. Here is when the 144,000 is called out. The, the, the preachers and two prophets, they preach like John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, Israel. Repent what? Repent from your sins, your unbelief, and turn back to God. Now, let us remember something here. These great happenings, the nature has happened before in this uh, 12th verse here. See? The sun became as black as sackcloth of hair. Now compare this. Now remember, that does not happen in the Gentile. It's Israel. Let me show you. Now remember, I said it's calling out to 144,000. See? This time, now, it's when the, the tribulation wishes to do it. And this is telling what happens in this tribulation. Now, let's turn to Exodus 10, 21, 23. And watch here. When Exodus is when, of course, Israel was coming out. Going to be taken out. Exodus, the 10th chapter, and the um, 21st, 23rd verse. I'm so excited and shouting when I write these notes down and sometimes I might get them mixed up. All right. Exodus 10, 21, 23. All right, here we go. 21 and 23. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thine hand towards heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand towards heaven, and there came a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. Now they saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Notice. Just exactly. Now come over here. And the sun became as black as sackcloth. See? Same thing. These happenings of nature. What was it? What when it, nature happens like this? Has been God calling Israel. See? God's calling out Israel. Now, sun is black as hair. Now, God was about to deliver Israel there. All right. Bring them out of their enemy's hand, which was Egypt at that time. Now, here he is bringing them out of the Roman hand where they made their covenant. Same thing happens. That's the plagues. The, the time of this plague will call. It will plague this uh, group of Gentiles. If we had time, I could show what's going to happen to that Gentile church. The Bible said that the, the dragon, Satan, was wroth, that's angry, with the woman, the Jew, Israel. And he spurted water from his mouth, thickness and multitudes of people that went to make war with the remnant of the woman's seed. Amen. Revelation 13. Now, see there, we have that. And uh, that's when Israel sends her, I mean, Rome sends her army after the remnant, the remnant of the woman's seed. Now watch. The first time their enemy's hands, when he's delivered them out, his son turned to sack, uh, black as sackcloth. Now, this is the second time, the end of the tribulation period. Now, in Daniel 12, if we had time, we could read it. In Daniel, the 12th, the 12th verse, 12th chapter, rather, Daniel said, Every one that was found written in the book would be delivered. Now, remember, Daniel is now speaking of this period when this, this thing is supposed to happen. When Israel is to be delivered, when the, the end of their 70th week, and um, that's when they're supposed to be delivered. Now, let, let's we get to Daniel 12 here just a minute. 
And at that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince which stood for the children for, for the children of thy people. See? That's Jews. And there shall be a trouble such never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. Now I'll compare that exactly what Jesus said, Matthew 24. There shall be a time of trouble has never been since there was a nation. Look at the sixth seal. See? The same thing, a time of trouble. Notice, since there was a nation, even to the same time. And at that time, thy people now, in this seven, last part of the seventh year, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found uh, written in the book. The predestinated, you see, that's written in the Lamb's book of life, shall be delivered at that time. And many of those that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, and some to everlasting life, and some to everlasting shame and contentment. Now, and then shall the wise shine as the brightness of the firmaments, and, and they that turn many to righteousness shall shine as the stars forever and ever. And what he had told Daniel, shut up the book where he'd be resting in his lot till that time. Now, see, don't make it in where you live or die. You come forth anyhow. Amen. See, don't, uh, uh, dying isn't nothing to a Christian. He don't die anyhow. Amen. Now, Daniel 12 said that everyone that was found written in the book would be delivered. Here, God is about to deliver his second son, Israel, after the tribulation. See, the second time Israel is, Israel is his son. You know that. Israel is God's son. So he's going to deliver him here in the tribulation period just exactly the way he did down in Egypt. Now, let's stop here again and, and get something else so before we bring it into home. Now watch here. These two prophets, look what they're going to do now. Just like Moses and them did down there. And there was given me a reed. And... Um, uh, the third verse of the 11th chapter. And I will give power unto my two witnesses that they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees. You remember that? Zerubbabel and so forth was to rebuild the temple. And the two candlesticks that stand before the God of the earth. If any man hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth. Remember, out of the mouth of Christ comes the sword. Word. Devour their enemies. And if any man shall hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Now we know the fire in the 19th chapter of the coming of Christ preceded his sword from his mouth, which was the Word. Is that right? Amen. The Word. Oh, if you'll get this material now for that seal tomorrow night. See? The Word is the thing that God slays his enemy by. Amen. See? Now look here. When these prophets are prophesying, they're, they, if any man mistreats them, harms them, fire proceeds from their mouth. Holy Ghost, fire. The Word. The Word is God. Word is fire. Word is the Spirit. See? Proceeds from their mouth. Look at Moses. Let's see what comes from his mouth. They, Israel got to the way they were doing that. The, the, I mean, uh, Egypt. They were mistreating these Jews. Moses, well, they wouldn't let him go. Pharaoh wouldn't. God put the words in Moses' mouth. See, it's God's thoughts going into Moses' heart. He goes over now to express it. Then it becomes a word. Stretch his hand for it. Let there be flies. And here come flies. Amen. Look here. And if any man hurts them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devour their enemy. Amen. See, Amen. there it is. They can speak what they want to, and there it happens. Amen. Amen. And if any man hurt them, they must in this manner be killed. Brother, God rides on the scene here. Amen. They have power to, sh uh, uh, power to shut the heavens that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Elijah. He knows how to do it. He's done it before. Amen. 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 Moses knows how to do it. He's done it before. Amen. That's the reason it's kept back. Now, amen, I can say something awful good right here, but it's better for the Holy Spirit see? All right. And have power over the waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with plagues as off as they will. What is it? God can bring these things but the Word. They can do nature any way they want to. Here it is. They're the one who brings on this sixth seal. 
they uncover and open up. It's the power of God. To interrupt nature. See, the sixth seal is completely an interruption of nature. Do you get it now? There's your seal. Who does it? It's the prophets. The other side of the rapture. With the power of God, the word of God, they just condemn nature. They can stand earthquakes, turn the moon into blood, the sun can go down, or anything of their command. Hey, there you are. There you are. See? See how the seals opened down there in the church age? How it showed the martyrs? And now here's these two prophets standing here with the word of God to do anything in nature they want to, and they shake the earth. It shows exactly who does it. It's Moses and Elijah. Because there's their ministry re-impersonated again. Amen. Both men. Oh, my. Do you see it now? Amen. See what the sixth seal is? Amen. It's those prophets. Amen. Now, notice, don't let it choke you, but watch what opened that seal. Prophets. Amen. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> There you are. Hallelujah. Oh, we're living in the eagle day, brother. Head up among the clouds. They open that sixth seal. They have power to do it. Amen. There's your sixth seal coming open. See? Now we drop right back here and Jesus spoke it would take place. Way back down in the Old Testament, back in Ezekiel, back in the Old Prophets, they spoke it would take place. And here, the sixth seal opened, and they say, well, that's a mysterious thing. What did it? Here's the secret of it, the prophets. Because the Bible said so here. They can open it anytime they, they do anything to nature they want to. And they do the same thing they did do. Because <laughs> they know how it's done. Amen. Glory. When I seen that, I just raised out of the church. I walked up and down the floor. I thought, Lord, how I thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. There it is. That's it. They opened Amen. that sixth seal. Amen. Amen. Watch them. If any man hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth. The word. Holy Ghost, come up on the apostles, you see, fire, proceed out of the mouth. Now notice, over in Revelation 19, we see the same thing. And a great sword proceed from his mouth. Word. Yeah. Christ coming. And he slayed his enemies with it. Amen. Is that right? Yeah. Now he's on his road. <laughs> Watch him now. All right. These have power to shut the heavens, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Boy, that's interrupting nature. Now, how long did uh, uh, did this man, uh, Elijah, close the heavens for? Amen. There you are. <laughs> exactly. How long is Daniel 70, last part of the 70 weeks? Amen. There you are. <laughs> exactly. What did Moses do? He, he, he turned the waters into blood. He done all these kind of miracles, just exactly what's predicted here under this sixth seal. Amen. And here they are in Revelation 11 doing the very same thing. Amen. There's three different places in the Scripture out there blending the thing right together. Amen. That's the opening of the sixth seal. Amen. Right there it is. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Now notice. These have power to shut the heavens in the days of their prophecy, but it won't rain. And power over the waters to turn them to blood, to smite the earth with plagues as often as they will. Oh, my. Amen. <laughs> There you are. I turn it over here to the place. See, all nature is interrupted in this sixth plague or sixth seal open. It's exactly what happened. Now look. The here God is about to deliver His Son Israel after the same manner of the tribulation that He did down there. He sent Moses down there and delivered Israel. Is that right? And He done these very same things. He sent Elijah to Ahab. 7,000 come out. Is that right? Yeah. He sends them right back over here again at the time of the tribulation and calls out the 144,000. Now, see, you notice between Revela uh, between the sixth chapter, or the sixth plague, seal, pardon me, the sixth seal and the seventh seal, 
the seventh chapter of Revelation mathematically set together right. Amen. Just like America is number 13. 13 states it started with. 13 stars in the flag. 13 colonies. 13 stripes. Everything's 13, 13 and appears right here in the 13th chapter of Revelation. That's right. She's 13 and a woman. Now, when he was about to deliver his only begotten son, which was his only begotten Jacob is his son, but this is his only begotten son, Matthew 27. Let's see what he did there. Matthew, the 27th chapter. Now remember, his son had been beaten and had been troubled and they had made fun of him and he was now hanging on the cross at 3 o'clock on Good Friday afternoon. Just about to take place. Matthew, 27th chapter of Matthew and the, the 45th verse, I believe it is. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. Now, notice just exactly what he did back here now in this scene. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon, and the moon became as blood. Blackness, darkness, Egypt, blackness, darkness. God delivering Jesus at the cross. Just before he brought him up from the resurrection, first darkness, sun went out in the middle of the day, and stars wouldn't shine. Two days to man is going to raise him up with a mighty triumph. And if the sun and moon and stars and everything in Egypt, all these taking place, he delivered Israel to the promised land. Here it is in a tribulation period. Here stands them prophets to who has the control of the word that God gives them. They can only speak as God gives them the word. Amen. Now, they're not gods. They're temporarily, uh, uh, amateurly they are, because Jesus said they were. That you call them God to the word of God came. But look, that's the one that God brings the word to, and when he speaks it, it happens. Amen. That's all. And here he is with a commission from God to smite the earth whatever he wants to. Oh, my. Stop the heavens. And he does. What's the matter? He's fixing to take the 144,000 out for redemption. Out of the book of redemption, and that's under the seal of redemption. Hallelujah. And the sixth seal. That's it, my dear friend. Amen. That's that sixth seal. It's been so mysteriously. Let's just take, we got ten more minutes. Let's yeah. just take a look. Yeah. I got about two or three pages. Well, I got, you can just see here, I think it's about, on that one, I think I got about 15 pages yet left I could get to. <laughs> oh, there's so much on that, my, you can just keep going from place to place, but I'm afraid I confuse you when I scatter too much with me. And I'm not, I can't hold it together like I should. And Isaiah, let's take this. Isaiah the prophet seen this sixth seal open and spoke of it. That's where it's important or not. See? Well, the whole thing, the whole plan of redemption lays under these seals, the whole book. Now remember, we've seen Jesus saw it. Is that right? Yeah. See? Jesus saw it. And now we find others that saw it. We find it typed out in, in Jacob. We find it typed out in Egypt. We see it typed out at the cross. Now let's go back to Isaiah. I've got a whole lot more prophets wrote down here too. Let's just, I like this, uh, this of Isaiah. Let's go back here to Isaiah, the 13th chapter of Isaiah. I like, uh, Isaiah is a, a complete Bible in itself, you know. Do you know that? See, Isaiah starts out with creation. In the middle of the book, he brings John. At the end, he brings the millennium. And there's 66 books in the Bible and 66 chapters in Isaiah. It's a complete uh, encyclopedia itself. Notice, 13th chapter now of, of Isaiah. Let's begin here at the 6th verse. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. What's this 6th seal opening up here now? Plumb back here 713 years before Christ come. He's been 2,000 years. That'd be about seven, about 2,700 years ago. Isaiah, seen this seal hanging there. All right. Therefore shall all hands be faint 
and every man's heart shall melt. What did Jesus say? And because iniquity shall abound, the, the love of many shall wax, and, and man's heart will be failing for fear, see, roar, and see. Man's heart will faint. And they shall be afraid. Pains of sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that traileth, travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be ashamed. No of it here. Oh, their face is a shame. We've got to get to that. Just a minute. We're going to hold that thing. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. The land. That's all of it. Notice. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light, the sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her lights to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil and the iniquity, uh, the wickedness of their iniquity, and I will cause uh, the, uh, our, uh, I don't know how to spell it, uh, Aaron? Uh, I can't say it, see. Uh, of the proud deceased, and will lay low the haughtiness of, of the terrible. terrible. See there, just exactly, Isaiah saw the same thing that Jesus spoke of that the seventh seal reveals when he's cleansing the land with tribulation. Amen. That's the tribulation period, this sixth seal. Amen. Yes, he was a prophet, and the word of God was made known to him that's 2,700 years ago. <coughs> Truly, I just want to say this. The whole world is Isaiah here as a woman travaileth. All creation is travailing. Amen. Amen. What's all this groaning and travailing about? Like a, a, a woman that's to be mother. The earth itself, nature. Why? Why? This city here, let's take our own city, when fear joints and prostitution and filth and scum like any other city. Well, I believe God would be better off looking at the way he had it a thousand years ago. When the old Ohio traveled down, they had no backwaters and floods. They had no sin in the valley. The buffalo roamed through here and the old Cherokee hunted him and made a decent living. There was no trouble at all. But man come in. That's where sin comes in. When man begin to multiply upon the face of the earth, then sin and violence set in. That's right. Always man. Well, I think it's a disgrace. I was standing the other day in my home country there now in Arizona. Now, all I read when I was a kid about Geronimo and, and uh, Cochise and those old Apaches, because I preached to them up there. Fine people. And some of the finest people you want to meet are those Apache Indians. And then I went over there to, to a tombstone where they have all the old relics and things from the war. And I looked at, they always, you know, they always classed Geronimo as, as a renegade. To me, he was a red-blooded American. Absolutely. He was only fighting for his rights like anyone would do. Amen. He wanted out that pollution in his land. And look what it is now. Amen. Turning his children, his daughters into prostitutes Amen. and everything else. And white man coming there, a white man's a rascal. Amen. The Indian was a conservative. He was a, he was a, a conservationist. He'd go out and kill a buffalo. The whole tribe eat everything was left of it. They used a hide for clothes and tents and everything else. And a white man comes to shoot it for a target. Amen. Amen. Why, it's such a disgrace. I read an article in a paper. We're in Africa. That great place full of wild game. They got these guys, Arthur Godfrey and them, going over there shooting these elephants, things out of helicopters and things like that. A picture of an old female elephant trying to die and the tears like pulling down her face and two big males trying to hold her up to keep... Why, it's a sin! Amen. Amen. That's not sport! No. Amen. I stand out on the field out yonder and we're hunting things like that and see where them 
white hunters come out there and shoot them deer and cut a hind quarters off of it and sometimes kill eight or ten little does and leave them laying there and the fawns running around trying to find their mammy. And you mean that sportsmanship? That's pure, pure murder in my book. Amen. I hope Canada never gets any roads in as long as I live to keep them renegade Americans out of there. That's right. They're the poorest sports i ever seen in my life. Not all of them. There's some real genuine man, but it's one out of a thousand you find. Shoot anything they can see any way they want to. That's right. That's a murder. Right. He's heartless. He shoot out a season while well, up there in Alaska there I was up there with one of them guys who said I picked up I go out there now and find whole herds of them great big elk or not elk but the moose laying there with 50 caliber machine gun bullets through their horns where these American pilots out there in Alaska machine gunning out of that plane a herd of moose that's pure murder Amen. They know to never they kill the buffalo, they could get the Indian. He starved to death. That's the reason Cochise had to surrender. His all of his princes and all the rest of them, his children, all of his people were starving to death. They went out there with big, great big loads of them, uh, buffalo building them planes when they shot off all them buffaloes forty and fifty in the afternoon. They know when they rid of that, they got rid of the Indian. Oh my, stain on the flag the way they treat them Indians. There you are. But remember, the Bible said the hours come that God will destroy them that destroys the earth. Amen. And the whole world. Look at them valleys. I stand up there today looking down on the valley at Phoenix. Went up on South Mountain. My wife and I were standing up there and looked down at Phoenix. And uh, I said, isn't that awful? She said, awful? What do you mean? I said, the sin, how much adultery and drinking and cursing in the Lord's name used in vain in that valley there was about uh, 140, 50,000 people, maybe 200,000 people in that valley. And I said, 500 years ago or 1,000, there wasn't nothing but cactus, mesquite, and the old coyotes running up and down the sand river there, the, uh, the washes. And I said, that's the way God made it. But man come in. What did he do? He saturated the ground with filth. The streets are full of gall. The sewers are, and the rivers are polluted with, with filth. They couldn't... Why, uh, well, you better not drink a drill of some of that water. You'd get anything. Look at it. Not only here, but the world over. The thing is polluted. And the world, the nature... God have mercy. The whole world's... And in birth pains, the world is trying. She's travailing, Isaiah said. What's the matter? She's in trying to bring forth a new world for the millennium where yeah. all the yeah. sin yeah. Trying to birth a new world. For a new people that won't sin and pollute her. Right. She's in travail. That's the reason the, uh, the we are in travail. Christ... To bring forth the bride. Everything is travailing and groaning. See, there's something fixing to happen. And this sixth plague lets her go. Brother, the earthquake burst open. The stars shake. Volcanics will come forth and the earth will renew itself. New lava will break forth from the center of the earth. And she'll crumble all around and around and around. When she spins out in the other. And I tell you, one morning... When Jesus and his bride comes back to the earth, there will be a paradise of God there that, oh, wow! The old warriors of the battle walk down through there with their friends and loved ones. The anthems will fill the air of an angelic host. Oh, it was well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord that's been prepared for you like you should have had back in there before Eve started the ball of rolling in sin. Amen. Yes, six seals going to do something. Yes, sir. Truly, the whole world is groaning and painting for the millennium age. Now, the one now is so soaked up with filth that I preached here not long ago. I'll be preaching the tabernacle. The world falling apart. That's exactly. Look what's falling apart in the world. So everything's falling of it. Certainly it is. It's, it, it, it's got to fall apart. Listen. Look, it's framed. Let me show you the reason the world's got to do it. 
the frame of this world, the iron and the brass and the materials of this earth has been pulled out of it. its framework for war and industrial until it's just about ready. Well, we never had an earthquake till the other day over here in this part of the country, just the other day here, you see, St. Louis and down through there. She's getting so thin they've pulled everything out of it. See? It's politics are so polluted there's hardly an honest among them. See, it's system. It's morals is so low it just don't have any. That's all. See? Sure. It's religion is cankered. Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's time for the sixth seal pretty soon to be opening up. <laughs> and once she does, oh my, it ends. The bride has done gone forth. <laughs> She's done. The queen's done, went to take her place. She's been married now to the king while this is going on. <laughs> and Israel's remnant is sealed and ready to go. And then nature lets go. <laughs> oh, what a time. Notice the last verse of the sixth seal open. Those who had laughed at the preaching of the word. Out of the vindicated word of the living God. Well, them prophets that stood there and performed miracles, closed the sun and everything else, and all down through the age, see, they cried for the rocks and the mountains to hide them. See? To hide them from the word that they had laughed at because they didn't come. Hide us from the wrath of the Lamb. He is the word. See? They had laughed at the word. And here the Word was incarnate. <laughs> and they made fun of it. Laughed at him. Made fun of him. And the incarnate Word had dropped forth. Why didn't they repent? They couldn't. Amen. It's too far then. So they know that the punishment, they hear it. They'd set meetings like this and note about it. And they know that the things that those prophets had predicted was looking them right in the face. Amen. The thing that they had rejected, they had spurned mercy for the last time. And when you spurn mercy, there's nothing left but judgment. Amen. When you spurn mercy, just think of it. And there they were. They had no place to go, no retreat. And the Bible said here, they called for the cry to the rocks and the mountains to fall on us and hide us from the, from the face of the, uh, and the wrath of the land. They tried to repent. But the Lamb had come to claim His own. See? And they cried to the rocks and the mountain, prayed, but the prayers were too late. My brother, sister, the goodness and mercies of God extended to the people. While Israel was blinded for this, for year, just about 2,000 years to give us a chance to repent. Have you turned that mercy down? Oh, have you have you rejected that? Who are you anyhow? Amen. Where did you come from and where are you going? You could not ask the doctor. You could not ask anybody in the world. And there's no book you could read that could tell you who you are, where you come from, and what you're going but this book. Amen. Now you know without you have the blood of the Lamb to act in your place, you see where you're headed for. So if, if God did that for you, the least thing we could do would be accept what He's done. That's all He asked us to do. And on the basis of this, if I go any farther, I'll have to come right into that plague, oh, that tomorrow night service. And I, I can't do it. I can't go any farther. I got it marked down here, cross stop here. <laughs> see? So then uh, I got to wait till tomorrow. Now, let us bow our heads just a moment. If you haven't, my precious friend, haven't accepted the love of this God that I'm talking about. If you have, listen to this close now. If you haven't accepted His love and mercy, you'll have to stand His judgment and wrath. Now you tonight are in the same place that Adam and Eve was in the Garden of Eden. You have a right. You're a free moral agent. You can go to the tree of life or you can take the plan of the judgment. But the day while you're sensible in your right mind and you're healthy enough to, to rise and accept it, 
Why don't you do that if you haven't done it? Is there them people in here that hasn't as yet did that? If that be so, would you just raise up your hand and say, pray for me, Brother Branham? I now want to do it. I don't want this to come. Now, remember, friends, God bless you. That's good. I have... These are not my ideas of this. I, I, this is not what I've been thinking. This is all together for me. So help me. The Holy Spirit knows it. And you wait. If the Lord willing tomorrow night, I want to show you a mystery that's been going all the time right here in this meeting. I doubt very much whether you've ever seen it or not. What's, what's tough place? It's been something that's laid right here before you, and I've watched each night for, for, the ride, for somebody to say, I see it. See? Don't turn it away, please. I ask you, if you're not a Christian, if you, or you're not under the blood, if you're not born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, if you've never made a public confession of, of Jesus Christ by being baptized in His name to witness His death, burial, and resurrection that you have accepted, the water's ready. They're waiting. Robes are furnished in here. And everything is ready. Christ stands ready with outstretched arms to receive you. In one hour from now, that mercy might not be extended to you. You might turn it away for the last time. It'll never touch your heart again. While you can. While you can, why don't you do it? Now, why? I know the regular customary way is bring people up to the altar. We do that, and that's perfectly all right. At this time, we're such crowded in here. Right around the altar, too, I couldn't do that. But I'd like to say this. In the apostolic day, they say as many as believe were baptized. Just if you can really, down in your heart, here's all it is. It is, it is an emotion, though emotion accompanies it. Just like what I said, smoking and drinking isn't sin. It's the attribute of sin. It shows you don't believe. See? But when you truly believe in your heart and you know that on the basis of what you're saying there, you accept it with all your heart, something's going to happen right there. It's going to happen. Then you can stand as a witness to it that something happened. Then walk to the water. And say, I want to show to the congregation. I want to prove, I want to make my testimony stand that I'll take my place with the bride. I stand here now to be baptized. I know that there's many women in the world tonight, fine women, but I'm all lonesome to see one. There's one of them is my wife. She goes home with me. She wasn't my wife to begin with, but how she become my wife, she took my name. He's coming. There's a lot of women churches in the world, but he's coming for his wife. She's called by his name. Them that are in Christ will God bring with him. How do we get into it? By one spirit. We're all baptized into one body. Now, while we pray, you pray too. Inside or out. There's great groups of people in the rooms, outside, standing around, out in the streets. But now, while, while you are... We can't call you up to the altar, but your heart make it the altar. And right in your heart, say, Lord Jesus, I believe this. I stood out here in this night air. I've been smothered up in this little room. I'm sitting in here amongst these people. I, 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 I don't want the, I can't, I can't afford it. Everything is, I told you last night. And so help me. The Lord knows I tell truth. I lie not, as Paul said. That vision or whatever it was, I stood there, looked, and handled those people that's gone on. Just as real as I'm standing right here. Don't miss it, my poor brother or sister. Don't do it. I know you've heard preaching, you've heard this, that, and stories, all that. But let, just listen for me. This is, I know it's the truth. See? You just, I, I, I can't make it any clearer. See? Don't miss it. It's all yours. Now let's pray. Lord Jesus, here before me is a box of handkerchiefs that represents the sick people. And as I pray over them, laying hands upon them, as the Bible said they took from the body of Paul, handkerchiefs and aprons, unclean spirits went out of the people. And 
great signs were done because they seen Paul that they know the Spirit of God was within him. They know that he was he was a strange man. That the things that he talked about, about the word, you go take the old Hebrew word of the Hebrew church and bring it to light and place it in Christ. They know God was in the man. Then they seen God working strange and mighty works by him, foretelling things and it would happen that way and they know that he was God's servant. Lord, I pray that you'll honor these people for their respects of the word. And heal them for Jesus' sake. Out here in the audience, Lord, they're setting up people just like it was to listen to the apostle Peter at the day of Pentecost. How he went back in the word and got the word. And he said, Joel said in the last days, these things will take place. And this is that. And the 3,000 believed it and were baptized. And Father, today we stand here by your grace. And it's not because it's a special people, but it's because just like the day of the lion or the ox or the man, it's the eagle time. It's the anointing of the hour. It's the time that we're living in. It's the working of the Holy Spirit for this particular time to prove that Jesus is not dead. The things that he said that he would do just before the evening lights went out. And here we've been seeing him do that right down along the road. We've seen it come down in the scientific research and had his picture taken, the great pillar of fire who led the children of Israel, who met Paul on the road. And we know this same pillar of fire that led Moses down there in the wilderness, by that same pillar of fire he wrote several books of the Bible. For he was anointed with the word. This same pillar of fire coming up on Paul on the road to Damascus, he wrote many books of the Bible called the Word of God. Now, Lord, that same pillar of fire, by the evidence of the proof of the Word and by scientific research, we see it here revealing the Word of the Lord. Amen. God, let the people be quickly awakened, Lord. Yes. Quickly. Those who have their names put on the book of life, when this flashes across your path, may they see like the little ill-famed woman at the well that day. She recognized quickly it. And she knew it was a scripture. And now, Father, I pray that all that will receive you at this time in their hearts will set it forever at this hour that they're finished with sin. That will arise and make preparations now for public confession of baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins to show that they believe that God has forgiven them and they take on the name of Jesus Christ. Then, Father, pour down the Holy Spirit of oil upon them, that they might be placed into the uh, service of the Lord God, that they might be workers in this last evil day. For we realize we have just a short time, and the church might go at any time. The Lamb might at any time leave the sanctuary up there, or, or the throne of sacrifice, come forth from the throne of God where the sacrifice lays. And then... It's over. There's no more hopes for the world. She's finished. Then she goes into uh, flusterations of great spasms of earthquakes and, and great uh, shakings like it was at, at the resurrection. And, and uh, the, as Christ rose from the grave, when the saints rise, the same thing will take place. Lord, it can be in any minute. We're watching for that glad day to arrive. Take your children under your arm, Father, now. Draw your little lambs to your bosom. Grant it and feed them on the Word till they're in strength for service. We commit them to you now, Lord. I'll answer this prayer. You said, Father, over in Mark 11, chapter, when you pray, stand praying. Believe that you receive what you ask for. You shall have it. And with all my heart to him that's been revealing these 
things down through the years and these seals here in these last week, I believe you, Lord God, that it is the hour close now, closer than we're really thinking of your approaching. Please let my prayer be answered and may ever call child of God that's in hearing distance of here or either the tape shall strike. May at that time I claim them for the kingdom of God upon the basis of knowing this is the word that's being revealed. Let the evening light shine, Father. I commit them to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now all inside or outside that believe and has never made your, your public uh, confession that you're finished with sin and you, you want the mercies of God and you've accepted them in Jesus Christ, the fool, you'll be ready to baptize anybody who wants to be baptized today or tomorrow, right now or whenever it may be. Do you enjoy the sixth seal? Yeah. You see where it's opened at now? Have you believed it? Amen. It said, Who has believed our report? Amen. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Amen. Believe the report, then the arm of the Lord is revealed. The arm, the Word of God, Amen. is revealed. The Lord willing now, tomorrow morning I'll try my best to answer those questions. I'll spend probably the rest of the night, and, or most of it, and prayer over them. I'm getting about from one to three hours a night. I never got to bed last night till going on one, and at three o'clock I was in study. See, uh, I'm going to have to answer for this. That's right. We're too close for anything, any foolishness or any presuming or halfway belief. I've got to see it first. And then when I see it, it's got to be in the Word, too. And so far, by the grace of God, they perfectly, I took it from all the way through. You know that. Amen. It's it's blended right together. It's got to be, thus saith the law. Because it's not only as it saith from the, me knowing it myself, but the word of the Lord is thus saith the Lord. And here is a word taking what he has given to me and blending it together and showing you so you know yourself it's thus saith the Lord. Amen. See? Here's the word says so. And then the revelation that he gives me, which is contrary to what any of us has ever thought. Well, contrary to what I thought. Because I never went into it like that. But now we find it slides right together. And what is it? It's thus saith the law. Amen. It's been a place open up holding there to this hour. And then the Lord comes and pushes it right in like that. So you see, there it is. It's, it's the Lord. Oh, I love him. I love him with all my heart. Now remember, you, we couldn't get to the altar. Several held their hands up. Now, see, it's an individual affair with you. It's whatever you want to do. See, the hour is so close at hand, you ought to be pressing as hard as you could. Not have to be pulled. See? Just pressing, trying to get in. Lord, don't let me out. Don't leave me out, Lord. The doors are closing. If I can just get in. See, God will close the door one day. He did in the day of Noah, and they beat on the door. Is that right? Amen. Now remember, the Bible said that in the seventh watch. Is that right? Amen. Some fell asleep in the first watch, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. But in the seventh watch, there come forth a proclamation, a cry. The bridegroom cometh. Go out to meet him. The sleeping virgin said, Say, I'd like to have some of that oral now. The bride said, I just got enough for myself. Amen. Just got enough. Do you want you to go pray it up? Don't you see the sleeping virgin now? Look at the Episcopalian, Presbyterian, Lutheran, and everything. Trying to, and the trouble of it is, instead of trying to get the Holy Ghost, they're trying to speak in tongues. Amen. And a lot of them speak in tongues, and it's a shame to come to this church to be prayed for. Most of them come to their house and pray for them. Do you call that the Holy Ghost? Amen. That's speaking in tongues, but not the Holy Ghost. Amen. I believe the Holy Ghost speaks in tongues. You know I believe that, see. But there's a counterfeit to it, too. Amen. Yes, sir. Uh, the fruits of the Spirit what well, proves what it is. Amen. The fruits of the tree proves what kind of a tree it is. Amen. Not the bark. <laughs> the fruit. <laughs> now, notice. Then when she come, that 
that last hour. And there, when they come in, and they went and said, Well, I believe I've got it now. I believe I got it. Yep. We're getting it. I, I, I better not say this. See, because it, is, it might cause a confusion. When I said in the day the rapture hat would come, uh, uh, now, if you say you, you'll take it, all right. Watch. Watch. All right. That's up to you. When the sleeping virgin, see, that thought she was prayed up to come back, the bride was done gone. Amen. It went and she didn't know it. Like a thief in the night. Then they begin to bang on the door. And what happened? What taking place? They were cast into the tribulation period. The Bible said there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Is that right? When it's going to be, brother, sister, I don't know. But uh, I, me, it may be just me here now, see. Uh, this, this, is, this is my thought. See. Uh, I, I believe it's so close. Uh, I'm, uh, each day, I, I want, I'm just trying to walk as soft as I can. And I, it, when, you know, when something happened today, and I seen something come up, uh, I just I couldn't get my breath anymore. See? There he was standing there, that little light standing right there, and here it was, I know it's the truth. Amen. I thought, oh God, I couldn't say that. I, I can't say that. I can't. I just walked out of the room, went out, walked up and down. Uh, I thought, my, what can I do? Okay. And I, I have to go fishing or something. Or I, boy, you, you, I can't tell you. See, so uh, we have a good time, don't we? Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Amen. We're in a we're in a, a tremendous time. Amen. See, for my heart is overflowed with happiness and joy. But when I think of this world and the thousands that I know that's lost, black shadowed, mm, then your heart just bleeds. What can you do? What can you do? You just feel the Holy Spirit crying out in your heart like it must have been in our Lord when He looked over Jerusalem, His own people. He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how oft would I have hovered you as a hen would or a brood, but you would not. You just feel the Holy Spirit say, how often I would have gathered you. But you would not. We're, we're right here at something, friends. Whatever it is, God knows. Nobody, nobody knows when it's going to happen. That's a secret. Nobody knows when it's going to happen. But Jesus told us, when you see these things, all these things, is what what it went, comparing with the sixth seal to what he said in Matthew 24. Now remember what he said. When you see these things come to begin to come to pass, then the time's at the door. What's the very next verse? The 30, the 30 and 31st verses as one on down, 32nd, 33rd verses. He said... And he shall send forth his angels to the four corners of the heavens, to the four winds, to gather his elected. Amen. Is that right? Amen. So now learn up. Now remember, he stopped right there. He never went ahead after that sixth seal. He never said anything about the seventh. He said the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. But he stopped there. Never mentioned about anything. About What's the next thing he said? Now learn a parable. And then he starts on parable. He said these things will be. He's answering them three questions. What will be the, these signs and what will be the sign of your coming? What will be the sign of the end of the world? And the sixth one there was the end of the world. And the sounding of the seventh angel raised up the hands and swore by him that lives forever that time shall be no more. Their earth is giving birth to a new one. Amen. It's over. And here we are. Right here at the door. Oh, I tremble. Uh, what must I do, Lord? What, what else can I do? See, And then just think of seeing that place and those precious people. I stood there looking at myself. And I thought, oh, God. Why? They, they came this. this I, I, I ought to push them. I ought to reach, reach out to the audience and got them and push them. You can't do that. You, and no man can come except my Father draws him. But here's one consolation we have. All the Father has given, He will come. 
But the rest of them are those organizations depending on them like that. See? And he deceived all that lived upon, dwelt upon the earth whose names were not written in that Lamb's book of life. Slain from the foundation of the world. So, see, it's a sad thing. The only thing you can do is just, 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 just stay right with the Word. Watch just whatever He says do, and then do that, see. Whatever He says do, do that. And you look out there and say, oh, my. They do this, and they look, oh. It's just, you don't realize what a stream. Now, I want to say this, I suppose, Petro. A lot of people say, Brother Brandon, with the ministry of that type, I have to watch, because people just take them tapes and just try to pick them to pieces, you know. So, when uh, they say, Brother Bram, wish we had a ministry. You don't know what you're saying. Amen. Yeah, That's the truth. yeah, honest. You don't know what goes with it, brother, sister. <laughs> and the responsibility. When you've got people who hangs to what you say. Remember, if you tell them wrong, God will require their blood at your hands. <laughs> and you think of that. It's a terrific thing. So, be lovely. Love Jesus with all your heart. Just fall, be simple. Don't try to try to try figure out anything. Just be simple before God. Because the more you try to figure out, the farther you get away from Him. Amen. Just simply believe Him. Say, now, well, when will He come? I, if He comes today, all right. If He comes 20 years from now, still all right. I'm going to go just the way I'm going now, following Him. Amen. Lord, if you can use me anywhere, here I am, Lord. If it's 100 years from today, if my great, 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 great grandchildren still live to see it coming, let, Lord, I don't know when it's going to be, but let me just walk right today, just with you, see. I, I won't cause I. I'll rise at that day just the same as I took a little nap somewhere. Coming down to that glorious palace yonder, that kingdom of God there, where all the old will be young. Hallelujah. Where the white robes are already on, the men and women has changed in the beauty, the very art of a, of a, a handsome man, a, a lovely woman standing there, and all the beauty and statue of a young woman and a young man standing there and never can get old. Never can be sinful. Never can be anything of jealousy or hatred or anything. Oh, my. I think a tapes is all found. I, I, I just got about three, four minutes I want to talk to you. Is that all right? Yes. Amen. 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 Now, this is just personal. Because tomorrow, I, I, that's going to be so tremendous. I think I just better say it now. See if I'll go stand. Uh, this is just for us now. I was just, uh, you know... Uh, I got a wife that I love, and that's me. And I, I would not a, 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 even have married her because of my love for my first wife. And yet, as much as I cared for her, I, I wouldn't have married her if it hadn't been God told me to do it. And you know the story of it, how she went to pray and how I did, and he told me exactly what to do and go marry her at that time to do it. She's a lovely woman, and she's praying for me tonight. And so now it's 8 o'clock at home. She's probably praying now. Now, notice. <clears throat> One day she said to me, she said, Bill, she said, I just want to ask you a question about heaven. I said, all right, Meaty, what is it? She said, you know I love you. I said, yep. Yeah. Right after this happened up here. She said, you know that hope loves you too. I said, yep. Yeah. And she said, now... She said, I don't think I would be jealous. She said, but hope was. And she said, now when we get to heaven, and you said you've seen her there. I said, she was there. I've seen her. I've seen her twice there. She's there. She's waiting for me to come. So is the best. So is Sharon. I've seen her. It's the same I'm looking at you. I've seen her there. And I said, uh, she said, well, now, when we get over there, I said, which one's going to be your wife? And I said, both of you. There won't be any. See? Yet both of you be. She said, I can't understand it. And I said, now, honey, sit down. Let me explain something to you. I said, now, I know you love me, and you know how I love you, and respects and honor. Now, for instance, what if I dressed up, went downtown, and some little prostitute, real pretty, come throw her arms around me and say, oh, Brother Branham, I sure love you. Start putting her arms around me, hugging me. What would you think? She said, I don't think I'd like that very well. And uh, I said, uh, I want to ask you something. 
do you, who do you love the best? It had to be a showdown, me or the Lord Jesus. Now, that's his family talking. And she said, the Lord Jesus. I said, yes, Bill, as much as I love you. But before I would give him up, I'd give you up. I said, thank you, honey. I'm glad to hear you say that now. I said, now, what if that same little woman would come up to Jesus and throw her arms around him and say, Jesus, I love you. What would you think about that? She said, I'd enjoy that. <laughs> See? It changes from filio to agapo. See? It's a higher love. See? And there's no such thing as husband and wife as, as to raise children. It's all gone. The, the female and male sex, uh, the glands are all, they're all the same. There's the... There's none of it no more. See, there's no sex glands at all. Not at all. See, you're just, you just, you just think of yourself without a sex gland. The reason they were put in us is to repopulate the earth, you see. But there, there won't be any there. There won't be neither male nor female gland. No. But the statue of the art of God will be there. That's exactly right. But we'll be truly genuine. No, no filio at all. All agapo. See? Therefore, a wife would be no more than just some lovely something. It's, it's yours, and she, you belong to each other. And there's no such thing as her. No, no, it's not even. See, the filial part's not even there at all. See, there can't be anything like a jealousy. It doesn't be jealous about. There ain't no such a thing there. You never know such a thing as that. See? And just a lovely uh, young man and young women to live. And then after, um, uh, I, she said, I see it now, Bill. I said, yeah. I want to tell you a little thing happened. I, this was a dream. I was asleep. Now, I've never told this publicly before. I told it to a couple of people, but never publicly before, as I know of. I, I dreamed about a month after that that I was standing one day, and I was watching the great uh, a time that, uh, not the judgment now. I don't believe the church ever comes to the, I mean, the bride goes to a judgment. But I was there when the crowns was being given out. And the great, great big throne set up here, and Jesus and the recording angel and all was standing there. And there was a stair steps like come down this way of white ivory, run down a circle, made a panoramic like this and went out. So that all this great host stand out there could see what was happening. And I'd stand back over the way back to one side, and I'd just stand there, never an idea I had to walk them steps. I'd stand there, and I'd see a recording angel would call a certain name, and I don't recognize that name. I look him way back out there. Here come the brother walking with the sister. Walk up you like that. The recording angel stand there by the side of Christ. Just a dream now. And he's watching. And their name was on there. It was found in the book of life. He'd look out over him and say, It was well done, my good and faithful servant. And I enter in. I look back where he's going. There was a new world and the joys. and That enter into the joys of the Lord has been, has been uh, for yours since the foundation of the world. See? And oh, I thought they'd go through there and meeting one another and just rejoicing and going over mountains and great big places. I thought, oh, isn't that what I go? Glory! Hallelujah! Just jumping up and down. Then I hear another name called. I think, oh, I know him. I know him. I, I, there, there he goes. There he Watch him. I got enter into the joys of the Lord, my goodness. Oh, I say, praise God. Praise God. Just say, praise like Just say, Armin Neville. See? And then I say, oh, Brother Neville. There he is. He, here he comes out of the crowd. Goes up. I uh, say, enter into the joys of the Lord. It's been prepared for you sat before the foundation of the world. Enter in. And old uh, Brother Neville just changed and just start back in there just screaming and hollering. Boy, I just shout and say, glory to God, stand over here by myself, having a wonderful time, watching my brother going in. And a recording angel stood there and said, William Brand. I never thought I'd have to walk that. So then I was scared. I thought, oh, my. Well, I have to do that. So I went walking down there and just... Everybody pat me on the... Uh, that, Hi, Brother Branham. God bless you, Brother Branham. Pat me as we go along through a great big crowd of people all over reaching over and pat me like that. God bless you, Brother. God bless you, Brother. I was going, I said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> like coming out of a meeting or something, you know, and I was going to have to walk these great big ivory steps. And I started walking up to there. And this just made the first step. I stopped and I thought... I looked at his face. I thought I want to get a good look at him this way. And I stopped. I had my hands like this. I felt something slip in my arm here. It's somebody else's arm. I looked around, and there stood Hope. Those big black eyes, that dark hair hanging down her back, white robe on, looking up at me like that. I said, Hope. I felt something hitting his arm. Looked around, there was Meaty, that dark eyes, looking up, and that black hair hanging down a white robe on. And I said, Meaty. And they looked at one another, you know, like that. 
this. I got him in my arms, and here we went. We woke up home. <laughs> I woke, oh, I woke up, and I, I got up and sat down in a chair and cried, you know. I thought, oh, God, I hope that comes like that. Both associated with me in life and bringing children and things like that. And here we are walking into the new world. Oh, my God. Perfection and everything. No, nothing. Oh, it's going to be a wonderful thing. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. By the grace of God, do all you can do, and that'll be up to God to take care of the rest of it. Then, I... There's just both hands up in the air, praising God. That's the reason I was lingering here a long time. And I tell you what, I do I talk about meeting them? And that I was watching to see what I kept noticing that light circling back and forth and went hung over. I thought that's it. Oh, yeah. 
has appeared.